Let's assume you are the analyst in a team whose goal is to design a bracket with a bolt, a nut and a rubber spacer. The design should be as lightweight as possible with stresses in the steel bracket not exceeding 230 MPa and strains in the spacer below 5%. There are many tools available today that you can use to determine if an initial design will meet the design goal, including ANSYS Mechanical. You can use them to show that a proposed design will meet or fall short of the design goal. In our case, we determined that the current design weighs 982 grams and shows stresses at 282 MPa and strains at 5.1%, which obviously does not meet our goal. But what now if you could quickly examine many different variations of the same design to determine the best possible variations that meets the design goals. You may think that this would be nice, but that you don't really have the time to set up and investigate many different simulations like that. In this video, I am going to show you how NCS Mechanical can help you exactly do that with very little extra time and effort on your part. In doing so, how you can find out that there is a better design for our bracket that weighs 981 grams, shows traces at 225 MPa and strains at 4.4%. No other structural simulation tool in the market today can offer you the functionality that you are about to see with the simplicity and at the price point that ANSYS offers. We'll start by looking at computing just a few variations of the design to find a suitable solution. Then I will show you a more systematic approach to design variations that will lead to the optimal solution I just talked about. In the last part, I'll show you how efficient ANSYS Mechanical is at setting up the initial model from which all of our parametric variations will be performed. The starting point of our problem is a parametric CAD model whose dimensions can be varied. If this was not the case, a tool like ANSYS Space Claim would let you create the parameters you need. The load on this model consists in a ball pretension. A quick look at the simulation model shows linear and nonlinear contact and a mesh using tetrahedral and hexahedral elements. The rubber material is nonlinear and will also activate left deformations. Let's now look at how we can automatically compute several variations of our model. Using ANSYS bidirectional CAD interfaces, you can modify the dimensions of your CAD model. Here, we define the spacer diameter as a parameter by checking the box next to it. And we'll do the same with the bracket thickness, the radius, and the position of the bolt along the length of the bracket. They will be our design parameters. And we can also define the performance indicators, the mass of the assembly, the strains in the spacer, and the stresses. Once parameters are defined, you just have to fill a design point table with the variations you want to investigate. Once the table has been filled, you just click on Update all design points. As this is all automated, you can work on other duties until all points have been computed. Once all results are available in the table, you just choose one that best meets your requirements. Here, we find a good design with that, that meets the stress and strain requirements, but it is above 20% heavier than our original design. Maybe you could find a better alternative. To do so, you could here add a few more points and keep iterating, but you could also use a more systematic approach. Instead of asking for a few variations, you can ask for an analysis over a range of variations of the design parameters using a tool like ANSYS Design Explorer. You will first define the range of variation of the design parameters, and then a number of variations will be automatically computed. In our case, that's 25, and it will take about an hour. Once done, you have access to graphs showing the variation of the stresses, strain, or weight with respect to the design parameters. You can also understand the sensitivity of each indicator to each design parameter. In the current case, the bracket thickness is clearly the dominant parameter that drives the performance followed by the bulk location for stresses and strains. Performing an optimization on the model is then very straightforward. You define one or several goals, for example, minimum weight and some constraints, and as a result, you get several candidate configurations that match your goal. Usually, there will be more than one solution to a given problem. And there is a lot more information available as well. For example, a trade-off plot will indicate what you can expect from your model. In this example, you see that you can't get the minimum weight without sacrificing the stress limit, and minimizing the stress will necessarily increase the weight. The colored points indicate the design region that satisfies your optimization problem. You could also look at an interactive optimization using this graph. You can move the sliders to set the parameter limits and immediately see which design parameters values to use. Of course, the mathematical optimum may not be something you can manufacture. So it is wise usually to check a configuration that is close enough. For example, here, rounding the proposed values shows that the design is still acceptable. 
The final design here weighs only 981 grams, very close to our original design in weight, and much better than the one you previously found by the uh, systematic approach you used before. Now that we have seen what kind of results a mechanical simulation with ANSYS can provide, let's look at how easily you set up the initial mechanical model. Starting from a blank project, you are going to perform static structural analysis. The corresponding system is dragged into the project. You then define the material either through file import from libraries or from direct input. The next step consists in associating your CAD model with the current project. Contacts between bodies are automatically detected upon import. All you need to do is set up the contact type bonded and frictional in this model. Meshing is automated as well. You can select from various meshing methods and apply size settings, local refinements, and other controls. The mesh is generated in parallel, meaning multiple bodies are meshed in parallel if you have multiple cores on your machine. Loads and boundary conditions are applied on the geometry, which helps in performing parametric analysis. In this case, we have a bolt pretension and you simply select the shaft of the bolt to define it. It's now time to solve the model. During the solution process, you can monitor the solver output either from a text file or using graphs such as the convergence plot shown here. You will note that in this simulation, only default settings were used. The robustness of the ANSYS mechanical solver allows you to compute nonlinear solutions, including contacts or materials, such as rubber in our case, without requiring the user to tweak many settings. Results can be shown on the global model, such as for the deformation plot, or scoped to individual entities, such as bodies, faces, edges, or vertices. It is equally easy to perform a plane cut and investigate the interior of the model. If you then want to study automated variations of your model, you simply choose your design parameter and performance indicators by checking the corresponding boxes as I showed you earlier. Whatever the complexity of your structural model, your goal as an analyst should be to provide guidance on how to meet given requirements or improve a design. Your work is not over after the first simulation. Using ANSYS Mechanical provides you all the tools to solve your most complex problems. While apparently simple, this model still involves nonlinear contact, hyperelastic materials, and nerve deformations. You will likely have to solve even more complex problems, but the setup of any model won't be more complicated than what you have seen here. ANSYS Mechanical will also allow you to go really beyond this first simulation in just a few mouse clicks. The first simulation will tell you that the design is not optimal and needs improvement, so you will have to look at variations. And rather than doing it manually, our tools will let you automate the design variations and improve the existing design, either as I showed from a few variations or from response of phase and optimization tool as I shown in the second part. Thank you.